Hello there, Vapors. Uh, I don't know if y'all are familiar with Robert Green. Uh, he does videos, vaping videos that are pretty darn funny and thought-provoking. Uh, and he m had mentioned something about uh, cotton wicking. And a lot of people are having, uh, seem to have trouble with uh, getting a K-Fun style uh, slash fogger slash orchid style atomizer to wick properly. So I thought with this video I would uh, go ahead and address that and hopefully it'll help some people out. Now this uh, this is a fogger, sorry about that, this is a fogger base, a uh, fogger atomizer base that I just took apart and this is the old wick that I had in it and I'm going to remove the cotton pulse the coils to clean them off and then re-wick uh, re it. And something to keep in mind when you're using uh, cotton is that uh, if the density isn't right going through the coil and the density isn't right on this these particular style uh, atomizers going through the juice channels it's not going to wick properly. It's either uh, not going to wick uh, enough and you'll get dry hits or you will have a continuous uh, slow leak in the, uh, from the atomizer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, put the atomizer base on a mod and uh, as you can see I'm using a uh, DNA 30 mod, variable wattage mod to uh, to do this with. I'm going to bump up the wattage to 30 watts and I'm going to fire the coils till they glow Okay, and just give them a little rub with a little screwdriver or like I'm doing here with little, uh, with the tweezers. And what you're trying to do by doing this is just get any carbon buildup off of the coils. You need to do this whenever you re-wick any of the atomizers. If you don't get the carbon off of there, uh, you'll it, you'll it'll come through in the flavor when you go to vape it. Okay, so that's cleaned off pretty good. And uh, just for a uh, building a stable building base, I'm going to put it on this ohm reader. And just for giggles, let's see what my ohms are. 1.3 ohms. Okay, so uh, what we have, let me see, what did I do with the cotton? Huh. I've got to find my cotton pad now. Ah, here we go. Okay, this is uh, Japanese cotton. It's Kojendo. Uh, it's not much different than uh, regular cotton. It is nice, however, because it comes in a nice little pad, and all of the fibers, cotton fibers, run in the same direction, which uh, tends to help it uh, wick better. Okay, and uh, here again, you can use cotton balls. The same uh, technique or whatever can be used with cotton balls. I just have gotten into the uh, started well I've been using the Kojin Doe cotton for quite some time now and I find it uh, superior to just regular organic or uh, sterile cotton balls. And the Kojin Doe is organic it's non-bleached uh, this particular batch that I have here is non-bleached. 
Okay, so I've cut a little strip off of the pad. I've cut it with the grain or with the uh, the fiber. You know, the fibers are going this way. I've cut it lengthwise with the fibers. Okay, and for the size coils that I'm using, and I'm sure most people use a little bit smaller coils, uh, di smaller diameter coils, uh, this is a little bit thick for, for threading through that size coil. So what I'm going to do is just take this first thin layer off of there okay and that should give me the right correct density for wicking the style atomizer again uh, I'll repeat uh, the K-Fun the Fogger and the Orchid all have uh, let me get a screwdriver here all have they all have these juice channels. Uh, the K-Fun has two channels. The Orchid uh, has four channels. The Fogger V4 has four channels. Uh, the Aqua, the Aqua Atomizer, Tank Atomizer, that also has the same design as far as the uh, juice channels for, the, for your cotton. Okay, and this technique will work for all of those atomizers. So what I'm going to do, I've cut a little strip of cotton and I'm going to twist one end of it enough so that I can get it started, uh, get it threaded through the coil. Okay, I'm going to get that end started and I'm going to pull it through. Now, uh, as you can see, it's pretty tight, uh, and this is what makes this cotton a little bit different than uh, cotton balls. All the fibers are running in the same direction, which aids in the wicking uh, of the juice to the coil. Now, with a cotton ball, all of your fibers are all curled up and tangled together like this and that somewhat restricts the flow of juice uh, with the fibers all running in the same way like I said it's beneficial for the juice flow uh, so there's le it's less likelihood of you getting a dry hit due to uh, incorrect density of, of the uh, cotton but anyway so when I'm running uh, wicking the cotton through the coil or threading the cotton through the coil. As you can see, it's pretty snug, but it's not bunching up on either end, on either side when I pull it from side to side. Uh, that's what I want. I want it pretty tight. I want it good and tight uh, the, to, to ensure that the cotton is touching the inside diameter of the coil uh, pretty firmly all the, all the way around the uh, the inside of the coil. Okay, so I've got it this one coil threaded and I'm gonna go ahead I don't want to waste well I'll tell you what I'll do I'll, I'll do it this way. I've twisted one end up and I got that threaded through so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it on through this way. Okay I'm going to leave about that much on one side of it. And I'm going to guesstimate it and I'm going to cut it off about right here on the other side. Okay. So using this one little strip of uh, cotton, I'm going to wick both coils. Okay. Now, we've got our cotton through there, 
and one thing what you'll want to do uh, when you get to this point is you'll want to saturate the cotton with a juice and the reason you do that is it makes it easier to stick uh, when you go to uh, tuck the cotton into the juice channel uh, it, make, it, it helps it to ad adhere to the atomizer base. The cotton will adhere basically to the atomizer base. It will stay where you put it. And that will aid, uh, aid you in, when you go to put the chimney back on the base. It will keep the cotton tucked into the channels without uh, getting on the threads and, and messing up. So let me uh, get some juice. And we'll get ready to thread that. And while I'm at it, cut that off. Okay. And let's see what kind of juice do I want to use? Okay. I think I'm going to put some uh, Cape Fear brand juice and the flavor is it's a high VG uh, juice and the flavor is called Chikora it's really good uh, it's a dessert type of flavor uh, it's very similar tasting to rice pudding. It's very good. Uh, at the shop where this is sold at, here where I get it from, uh, whenever they get a new shipment of Cape Fear Chikora flavor in, it flies off the shelf. It's really good. So yeah, I'm going to saturate the cotton wicks pretty well. Uh, make sure that they're good and it's good and saturated. Get some more juice. Okay. And I think what I'll do after I wick get this wicked properly is I'll make a little video. You know, if, I'm sure if you're watching this, you see my other videos. I did a uh, a Fogger V4 how-to build video, and I made a uh, vapor production video for that. And I'm gonna I'm gonna make another vapor production video for this for this wick wicking that I'm doing here, just so y'all will be able to see the results from this wicking. Okay, so I've got my cotton saturated there and uh, I already know that that's way too much cotton uh, for what the way that I'm going to do this. So what I'm gonna do, okay, I'm gonna cut off, thin out basically this cotton right here okay I'm gonna be cutting most of that off so that I just leave just enough cotton to be able to tuck into this these juice channels without bulging out or protruding out so that when I go to when I go to install the chimney on here it won't get uh, the cotton won't get caught up in the threads and it'll mess up uh, the wicking in here but also, uh, I'm going to be cutting it with scissors. But I'll want to leave as much intact of the, you know, the, the density, the thickness of the cotton that's going through the coil. I want to leave as much of that intact as I can. Okay, so I'm going to be cutting this cotton on an angle. Okay, to thin it out so that I can tuck it into the juice channel. And another thing... Uh, when you when you place the cotton in the juice channel okay you just want the cotton to lay in this channel 
uh, and you really don't necessarily have to take it all the way to the bottom. You definitely don't want the cotton sticking out on the horizontal part of the juice channel. So uh, at the most, you just want it to just touch the bottom of the vertical juice channel so that it's just touching the, the beginning of the horizontal area of the juice channel. If you understand that, I hope so. Okay, uh, so what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and cut off at an angle about that much cotton off that one piece. Okay, now you see how that's angled right there and I've got just a little bit of, well, it's a little bit more than a little bit, but not very much cotton towards the end there. So I'm going to cut off a little bit more. Okay. And then take my screwdriver, my small screwdriver, and I'm going to tuck the cotton into that vertical part the vertical juice channel okay and actually it might be a little bit long so I'm going to take my scissors again and I'm going to cut off just a little bit of the length of that okay so I'm going to go back and tuck that cotton in there again Like I said, I want to keep this part of the cotton intact, as much of it intact as I can. While just a very little bit is being tucked in to the vertical juice channel. Now, I hope you can see that. So as far as the density of the cotton, you want just enough cotton to barely fill up that vertical juice channel. And if you look at it from a bird's eye view, you'll want that cotton wick to be tucked in there pretty good just uh, just keep in mind that you don't want it to interfere with the uh, chimney when you go to thread it on to this upper base that will be over the cotton wicks and the coils okay so we've got that first one done and <coughs> excuse me Go ahead and work on the second side. Okay. Now I'm going slow with this. Uh, but after you kind of get the hang of it, uh, it won't take any time at all to to get this down and get a perfect wick wicking job done every time. Okay, Let's move on to our next side. And, you know, I uh, saturated the cotton, and this is why I did, is so that I can kind of push the cotton into the vertical channel, juice channel, and, and uh, keep it keep it out of the way of the threads. 
Okay, and like I said, the juice acts sort of as uh, as sort of a uh, adherent. It will uh, the cotton will adhere to the juice channel and will stay there until you can get the chimney on there, threaded on. Now probably cotton density is more important or more critical rather with Genesis style atomizers because you're actually uh, when you wick the a Jenny style atomizer with cotton you're having to run the cotton through uh, the deck and if the cotton is too dense what happens when the juice uh, when it gets saturated with juice, the cotton will swell and it will actually restrict the flow of juice. Uh, the second next critical application for cotton wicking would be this style of atomizer. And the third, the least critical, would be uh, your regular uh, dripping atomizers. Okay, uh, if you take a look here, what I've tried to do is keep keep the cotton within the diameter of the uh, upper deck okay and I didn't want the cotton to extend beyond the vertical juice channel to the horizontal you don't want that uh, you would actually uh, probably rather have the cotton not quite going to the bottom of the vertical juice channel uh, I actually I've got mine going to the bottom of the juice channel but I think it's going to be okay uh, but you just want a little bit of juice in those vertical juice channels okay so we're ready to put our uh, chimney on and I do this very carefully I actually thread it, uh, spin it on there, and keep an eye on your cotton to make sure it's not getting caught up in the threads. Okay. So this looks pretty good so far. Okay. And one thing that I don't uh, that I would rather see on a fogger is that the top of the chimney actually hmm. yeah. it's tight right now. Okay, but anyway, so yeah, we've got our chimney on there. You can see our, there's no cotton sticking in the har, sticking out through the horizontal uh, juice channels. You don't want uh, you don't want the cotton sticking through too so much in there that it's coming through the uh, horizontal section. Okay, so there there we have it. That's the uh, the cotton wicking for the orchid fogger and K-Fun style atomizer. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and put the atomizer back together, uh, put the tank on it, put the top on it, fill it up with juice, and I'm going to do a video of the vapor production to ensure that I'm not going to uh, get any dry hits uh, to show you what type of vapor production uh, that this, this wicking, this type of wicking will give you. And hopefully, like I said, if you followed the video, it might take you a couple of times of uh, re-wicking to get it right. But remember, the density is, is, is what it's all about. And these vertical ju juice channels that are, that are cut into the upper 
uh, upper deck of the atomizer where your coils and all are sitting just think of it you, you don't want the density you don't want it, the cotton so dense that when the juice hits it it swells up and it and it tightens up it acts like a plug in these juice channels you want it just enough cotton so that it absorbs the juice and it will flow up the wick up to the coil okay I hope this helps and uh, let me uh, go ahead and uh, get this thing put back together and I'll do a, a vapor production video for you and uh, let me know uh, let me know how it works for you thanks for watching uh, check out uh, obsessive cotton disorder Facebook group if you'd like some more information or get in contact with me about uh, cotton atomizer wicking builds uh, let me know and uh, please subscribe to my channel if this has helped you uh, let others know about it if it's helped you it might help them also uh, if not I'm sorry that I couldn't be of any more help or assistance with it uh, but anyway uh, vape on and vape strong